now, would you A, smile and ask for more, or B, move the hell out the way? But before you answer that, let me ask America, has Pete ever really hurt anybody? The second episode of season one of The Boondocks is the first landmark episode that we are going to encounter throughout the entirety of this series. And when I mean landmark episode, I mean episodes of importance, episodes that were so good or so important that made a mark into the series that people still talk about it to this day and it has significance over certain significant events in our modern lifetime. And the reason why this is a landmark episode is because it's involving the trial of R. Kelly, the trial of a man that a lot of people defended for years because he made your favorite R&B music, your favorite love making music that probably made your baby that you're taking care of right now now he's finally in jail because he got caught lacking and then he just spazzed out on a monday morning news show and it became one of the best means in modern history yo killing me with this i can't have 30 years of my career robert 30 years of my career y'all trying to kill me you're killing me, man! And the thing about it is that this already was a crazy episode because it was taking on a serious topic in the black community, in American community, honestly, when it came down to the trial of R. Kelly back in 2002, where there was a video circulating around of him peeing on an underage girl that ended up him having being acquitted of the charges or the charges being dropped because they couldn't really find probable cause that he was the man in the video even though he was the man on the video also the whole thing where the girl uh refused to testify and pretty much say like hey i'm not testifying about this shit so the fact that you have an animated late night tv series in the boondocks talking about this situation centering on black culture it was already a big thing and a doozy and this episode deliver on so many fronts while also bringing in some other things about black culture and just certain things about the sense but really like the episode starts off with giving you just a rundown of just a trial and what's going on and just giving you like this bit header about like how yes the first episode we talked about a lot of problems with just america and white culture but now today we're talking about ourselves because let's just be honest black culture in itself can be really really fucked up you know it i know it it's a common thing that we see all over the beginning of the episode really goes in further by talking about a couple of things that we often see day to day that's really fucked up like you see the whole family of granddad riley and huey sitting down on the couch flipping through channels just channel surfing and they stop at a couple of stations the first one was the trial of, of whitney and bobby the whole thing with bobby and whitney houston you know that whole situation but they get to a channel where it's talking about that trial and then whitney's trying to defend the whole situation defending bobby brown and then bob brown's is over here going it's my show bitch <laughs> you know i think they're on drugs no one's gonna talk about that. No one's gonna talk about that shit. Goes to the next channel, and I think it's like BET having a music video where it's like Booty Butt Cheeks, which is one of the best songs in Boondocks history. I can't believe we don't have a soundtrack where we have all of these songs, these parody songs, in just one album. I, I can't believe we don't have that. Oh, love it, Lord. But like, yeah, like he goes to that one part, and then it finally gets into, I guess, the Fox News adjacent of what they have on the boondocks universe where they talk about the r kelly trial and just everything going on and then the whole funny ass joke about like granddad like what's wrong with a golden shower and he's so oblivious to what's a golden shower what's wrong with a man giving away a golden shower sounds like a nice gift to me <laughs> what shoot i wish somebody gave me a golden shower <laughs> one i like gold two i like showers <laughs> So then we get into that and we'll fast forward and just to the entire trial to where Riley and Hugh are walking to the trial because Riley wants to go ahead and defend R. Kelly and Hugh is just along for the ride because he wants to be there to protect his brother. And then the person who's handling the trial is the Tom Dubois, our first appearance of him, which Tom Dubois, he's a special man. He's a man who has a high status in his own community, but he's kind of a dumbass. This episode really shows one of the first couple of flaws about his character and then people like him that we are going to encounter throughout this entire series where not only is he very oblivious to his own flaws, but uh, he just gets caught lacking so many different fucking times, man. But like Tom's overseeing the case 
of the R. Kelly piss trial. And pretty much he goes up to the boys because he notices that they're going to the trial. And he's just like, I'm sorry I'm going to have to do this because I know he's your favorite artist, but I got to do what he's got to do. It was an underage girl. And this gets into one of the first big philosophical debates that we see between Huey and Riley that we often see throughout the entirety of the series up until maybe like season three and season four to where you have one side of Huey where he's talking about, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do because he's on the side of like, it sucks that it's a black man on trial because we already have so many black men going through the prison industrial complex system. However, knowing the evidence that's on there and the shit that he's done, you gotta do what you gotta do. And then Riley's on the other side of the fence to where he's bringing up so many goddamn straw man arguments and logical fallacies to the point to where it just confuses you to where now you're just like, okay, is he supposed to be right? What is he trying to say? He's making these illogical connections to prove that R. Kelly's innocent. And it goes into one of the big things about the boondocks that I do love that Huey and Riley are pretty much used as sort of like the black culture and just the different sides or different arguments that we often see in the day-to-day -day lives, especially on the internet. You have Huey who comes in the sense of more of a logical perspective and then Riley's in the sense to where it's like you have those people who come at it where they use a lot of logical fallacies they use a lot of straw mans they come from this like street side this street view that's the thing to where you see this throughout this entire series and this is the first of its kind and the sequence here with riley and tom it's funny as hell but it's also infuriating and sad because you often see this a lot of times on tiktok and on instagram and on youtube and social media in general to where it goes into the big theme of this entire episode the battle against ignorance the battle against ignorance is a tough one no one ever wins that shit there's no winners in the battle of ignorance it's either you lose against ignorance or ignorance just grows stronger as it continues to be more ignorant in this bitch riley is in a sense to where like he's a youth he's just dumb he doesn't know shit that much he has to grow up and kind of understand the world as he gets older but throughout this entire episode you just have a lot of grown-ass folks just saying i don't really care about what happened shit even if it is true that he peed on that little girl he makes some good music you see that in the scene with the fat black woman just eating fried chicken look at her lips and just going crazy and just ghetto and all this shit it's just like orders where it's quite the festive event and you are Hi. now why did you come out here to support r kelly Cause he good. and what about those protesters over there who say he's crossed the line man fuck them little red ass uppity niggas all they talk about is reading and eating right nobody want to hear all that shit if I want to get high blood pressure, then nigga, get the carrot away from me. If I want to get high blood pressure, then damn it, that's my business. You would think it's just funny at one point, but then you realize there's people like her and just them all over in the world. And you're like, God damn it, Ignat just runs amok. But you have this in a sense to where once you get to like the outside of the courthouse, you have <laughs> this funny sequence and sad sequence of one side of the courthouse of, of black people defending R. Kelly by throwing a barbecue, eating food, talking about like, it's my business about how I feel about shit. Damn it, if I wanna get high blood pressure, then damn it, that's my business. There's another side to where you have like just three black scholars who are just saying, we, we condemn this shit. And it's kind of sad because it's a battle of just intellectualism versus ignorance. And it's not often a great thing. And then you get into a point where like, Riley starts throwing the same straw mans that he does all the time in front of the camera, starts shouting out his homies and stuff. Huey grabs him and just says like, well, all right, enough of this bullshit. And then it get, becomes a misunderstanding to where, okay, the, the ignorant crowd is not understanding that both of them are brothers. So they thinking it's the R. Kelly, you know, detractors, the R. Kelly put them in jail supporters that are trying to beat them up. And it goes into this hilarious sequence to where you're just sitting there and you realize the best thing about the boondocks is the background noises. a matter of time before violence him broke up. out. Him it's him pandemonium him here at the R. Kelly trial. Oh, the humanity. But also one thing to notice here with that clip in that entire sequence is that 
you literally have the white man as the news, as the news anchor, just reporting on everything. And he's just over here talking about, I knew it'd be a matter of time before we just see chaos and ignorance run amok, which pretty much illustrates that whenever black people start going crazy at one another, and whenever we start having some infighting, there's always going to be a white man or a white woman just looking on the sidelines and just having a fun about it. Our bullshit is there entertainment that's just what it is and then you get into the trial and the trial is just bullshit you got adam west portraying r kelly's lawyer and he's using the whole argument that the reason why they want r kelly to go to jail is because he's a successful black man and america has already done black people so wrong to the fact that they're now trying to falsely accuse him for doing some shit now some people see this so-called mountain of evidence these videotapes, photographs, eyewitnesses, and DNA, and see a guilty man. But some of us can see that mountain of so-called evidence for what it really is, racism. Yeah. A lot of us, black people, often use the argument that because they just trying to bring a brother or a sister down from success. They gotten too successful, so they have to be knocked down a peg. That this is the reason why that a lot of our celebrities are either in prison or getting accused of some heinous shit. Hell, you could talk about we don't do that now today. No, we do. We we do. I just got done making a video talking about how people are trying to support Diddy and saying that they're just trying to bring a black man down, which motherfucker you can take your complaints to the comment sections i don't give a fuck and in between this argument uh you have this other situation where you have granddad and uncle ruckus just playing a game of checkers and it goes into one of their first sort of interactions you know how i talk about like huey and riley where it's a battle of intellectualism ignorance and all that you also have this sort of argument going on with granddad and uncle ruckus to where granddad is trying to come from a level of understanding to where how do I understand, like, how do you get so racist? How did you get to this level of racism, even though you're black yourself? Like, what happened in your life? Like, let me just throw out some things to kind of get a sense of, like, where you're coming from this angle, because maybe I can change you. Maybe I can understand you to the most part. And it all ends into a point to where he just can't understand him to where he just gets angry as hell and leaves the checkers game. Ruckus, how could you possibly love white people so much? It's easy. Have you ever looked at them? White man just a joy to be around. They smell like lemon juice and pledge furniture cleaner. And look at them, they gave us discipline, jobs, put structure in our lives, took us out the jungle. And what we do to show our appreciation? We march up and down the street. We vote, carry on, in grace. Well, how about this? Game. And I always just remember about like how Uncle Ruckus just found a way to like reinforce his racism, to reinforce his hateful attitude. And it's to the point to where it's like, yeah, in the first watch, you're laughing about it and you're having a good time. But you have to remember, it is like racist as hell. It even gets to the point to where it makes you angry because you know that there are people who find ways to justify their own racism. And especially in modern times, you have black people who want to justify not only their own racism, but racism from other people. And you see that all the time. Politics. <laughs> those people always find ways to justify shit and you in this sense granddad just have to go up there and just be like man fuck this shit man fuck you and all this right on. guilty that nigga is guilty <gasps> sir settle down you have to go deliberate i don't need to deliberate hang that nigga now i got the rope right here it's a really great way of having this whole entire theme of the battle of ignorance and just two different perspectives one from granddad's and one from huey's and i like how they were able to go back and forth and keep having this theme going on which is two different settings it goes to a couple funny things i mean the first one is just uh they pull up the evidence of r kelly 
just ping on the little girl and the attorney voiced by adam west is just sitting there going like we can't even tell if it's him and then turns out he's rearranging the camera and the next thing you know he's just like well we don't even know if that truly is r kelly and then he just goes out and gives us his social security number and it's just like oh shit and again the background noises to the boondocks hilarious shit Objection, we can't even see his face clearly. Oh, oh man, he got <sighs> freckles and everything. <sighs> that proves nothing. Hello. Yes, this is Robert Kelly. Yes, the singer. You are my social security number. Sure. It's 916-34-7865. Okay. God bless. Well, um... But then it goes into another thing where it's different from the, you know, the thing that they're trying to make a parody out of, which they actually had the little girl who got peed on actually testify. And it gets to the point to where like a lot of people are now siding with the attorney with R. Kelly. The cherry on top that helps him wins this defense is two things. One, he was ahead to say like, they don't want you to be free. They don't want me to be free. We're all oppressed. It's that battle of oppression, the victim mentality of it all. And the second thing, and this is the nail in the coffin for me, uh, the attorney brings up that Tom who's married to a white woman. <gasps> you already getting side eyes for the fact that you already prosecuting a black man. It's already fucked up now that you have a white woman as your wife and people can just go ahead and just smack their teeth like they do in the background. <laughs> you, you're not allowed to do that to a little girl. We have a videotape. Go tell that to your white bitch. Mm -hmm. This goes into the old thing, the, the whole shit to where it, it goes into one of the greatest moments in Boondocks history to where the attorney plays an R. Kelly song. R. Kelly starts grabbing a microphone, starts singing on top of a table. Everybody starts dancing. And then he was just looking around. He just slams the table. He just goes up, turns off the music. And then he just starts giving the best speech that you can ever hear. And you can't defend the full rangery you see in the scene. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put the speech out right now. What the hell is wrong with you people? Every famous nigga that gets arrested is not Nelson Mandela? Yes, the government conspires to put a lot of innocent black men in jail on fallacious charges. But R. Kelly is not one of those men. We all know the nigga can sing. But what happened to standards? What happened to bare minimums? You a fan of R. Kelly? You want to help R. Kelly? Then get some counseling for R. Kelly. Introduce him to some older women. Hide his camcorder. But don't pretend like the man is a hero. And stop the damn dancing. Act like you got some goddamn sense, people. Damn, don't playing around here. Two things can be right. Black people can be wrongfully incarcerated and put into prison for bullshit reasons or for no reason. And we have to fight the good fight to make sure that we try to go ahead and fight that discrepancy and that discrimination. However, just because that is a situation doesn't mean that every person who is black is innocent of all the shit they've been doing. This is a person who's done some bullshit and you can't go ahead and put him on a pedestal just because he's a celebrity. That's just a fact. And if you want to do something or help the brother out so he doesn't get into any of these crazy situations, go ahead and hide his camcorder. Go ahead and send him to therapy. Don't act like he's a fucking hero and that he could do no wrong. And then the last part. And I think that's just hilarious because it's like we still do this to this day like people want to act like we don't do this shit anymore like after watching this episode and seeing how r kelly went down people want to act like that we don't do this shit whatsoever that we could do no wrong we still do this shit to this day like hell i've talked about diddy throughout this entire episode because it's very relevant today but shit we could talk about how bill cosby was in this shit and he had 20 plus women go up and basically said yes this man drugged and raped me um uh, you had Jussie Smollett where yeah it was a small group of people defending him but I mean it was still a group of people trying to defend him even though it was just caught on evidence that he lied and he bullshit I can go through so many other people 
Oh my God. But yeah, I mean, like, it just still happens a lot of times. It's just back in the day in the 2000s, it just seemed to be more rampant. And with now us knowing the stuff that we know today about certain celebrities, there are more people easing into the fact that like these celebrities should not be put on a pedestal. But like still today, there are often black people, either small groups or in large droves that just find a way to make these celebrities out as heroes. And just whenever they're caught doing some BS, we always try to find a way to defend them. We hope and pray that they didn't do that bullshit. But when there's clear cut evidence that they did, they still want to go ahead and speculate that there's foul play in place. And that's not always the case. They just need some therapy. They need some help. They need some accountability in their lives. And that's just how it is. Sadly, um, a lot of these situations just end in the fact to where people just go ahead and be a Riley, where they just tell them to shut the fuck up and let's just keep fucking dancing and living in this woeful ignorance. Boo! Hey, you with the afro! Give it a rest! Beat it! Put the music back on! You stress and and this leads into a great uh, end monologue from Huey. I did battle with ignorance today, and ignorance won. I admit that I'm often vexed at the behavior of my own people. Yeah, vexed is a good word. You do what you can to help black folks, and they make you wonder why you even bother. One thing for sure, though, can't blame this one on the white man. What am I saying? Of course I can. And I guess like this goes into the whole thing, especially with the side story of just granddad and uncle Ruckus, that no matter how ignorant some of your black brothers and sisters can be, there's going to be a point to where you just go back and be like, you know what? I don't want to leave you high and drive because you're still my brother or my sister or my friend. I still got to be there for you no matter what. And even though we're going to butt heads with your ignorant ass, I still love you for who we are. And it's just a way for us to grow so that we can be a better group of people down the road. And then, he just goes in and says like i can't blame the white man for this but then it's like of course i can't i can't blame the white man for this and at that point it's just like supposed to be a joke but low-key it kind of is because sometimes you really look at just how history plays itself out and you start realizing that a lot of shit is the way it is because of racism i always think of like history being a puzzle just every piece of it just connects to give you the whole big picture and the whole big picture at times says that the reason why shit is the way it is because of racism. But yeah, it's a great episode. There's really no problems with it. I love it. it. It's something to where I just remember fondly for so many great things. And I'm just glad that I could just talk about it and just be real about it.